Can we start? Are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Oh, are we starting? Not okay. now. <laughs> Sorry. I said I count down now. I'm just going to restart uh, that countdown. I'm sorry. Three, two, <coughs> one. One. I'm good. Are you sure? Mm. Okay. I don't know. Sure. I'll be good. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Matt and Fiona Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are super excited to sit down and chat today um, for two reasons. It's finally getting cold outside again. Just a little bit. A little bit. It's like In 70 the degrees yes, at night. I know. And it's going to hit hopefully 65 or 60 if we're lucky. Much easier for sleeping. Which for Windows the rest open. of you Canadians is something that I don't know. Um, yeah, I should. I know. I get it. It's okay. All right. Mm. I don't know. Um, Again, it's late at night. It is late We're at night. We're good. We're going to talk today about uh, how to prepare yourself. Mm. And I know we just talked about how we got to this, and I don't, now I don't remember the story of what, what this stemmed out of. I don't know if it matters. I don't know if it matters either. It doesn't it matter just, at all. It's, it was one of the top... It stemmed out of life and conversations that we have. Actually, no. It was the one the other day when we were washing dishes. We were talking about this. Okay. Right? About getting to the altar and all those things. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so, preparing yourself. Mm. What we're referring to in this is that when life's easy, life's easy. Mm -hmm. And not that you don't have to do anything for your day-to-day -day life, but you don't have to do much, right? Every day just kind of rolls you along. You go on. You live life. You wake up. You have breakfast. You go to work. You go to work. You have lunch. You have lunch. your coffee. Sorry, you have coffee. You have lunch. You take an afternoon break, hopefully. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And so on. You, you come, come home. You have dinner. You make dinner. You hang out with the kids. Maybe you watch something. You go, you go to bed. Yeah. And it cycles and you do it again. But when something happens or when something comes up or an incident, mm -hmm. how you've prepared yourself is going to dictate how you're going to respond. Mm -hmm. Right? So if the kids are fussy, like ours were a little bit tonight, um, how you... Manage, manage your handle, life. React is shown by how you react, how you manage your, you know, your kids yeah. in a situation where they're at each other's necks and you got to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? Um, when an unexpected illness comes up, an accident, somebody gets hurt. The things that you don't ever want to happen in life that that always happen that happen because yeah. it's life. How you've prepared yourself is how you're going to respond. Um, what's in you is going to come out of you. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the easiest, simplest explanation that we can talk about is our kids are currently in a phase of loving Band-Aids. <laughs> and they've been in this phase for two years probably. Mm -hmm. but it's been rotating, so yeah. So every minor scrape requires a Band-Aid. Um, or if somebody requires a Band-Aid, but others don't. They like to find yes. non-existent reasons uh, that they need, I need a, a band-aid. Band even though there's nothing there. Um, yeah. But so, anyway. But when we actually need a band-aid, mm, right? right? When someone has cut themselves playing outside. Right. right? Fallen off their bike. Or fallen or... and scraped their knee and, and you know, shredded their knee. Mm -hmm. um, as much as a seven-year-old can shred her knee learning to pedal a two-wheeler. Um, I mean, not much. When she falls down and is screaming bloody murder mm -hmm. because she's minorly scraped her knee, <laughs> you'll know pretty quickly where you're at with how you respond to that. Mm -hmm. Because 
as soon as that happens, are you calling on the name of Jesus? Are you praying? Mm -hmm. Are you asking for healing, asking for peace, Mm -hmm. right? Are you screaming, oh my gosh, are you hurt? Do you need a hug? Um, Which is fine and dandy. I do give my kids hugs. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. 100%. But how you're going to respond is based on how you've prepared. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go even deeper than that. Even deeper. Well, yeah. I was trying to start small. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, I'm going to dive, dive in. in. Um, so last week, a couple of the kids just were not feeling well. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I realized through it, I mean, and we have very healthy kids. We don't really fight too much sickness, which no. I'm very grateful for. Yeah. But again, we prepare ourselves and every single night we pray health and healing over um, our family and um, Mm -hmm. our confession includes, I'm whole, healed, well, I will live long, I will strong, I will live healthy. So we incorporate the word of God in every aspect of our lives. Um, So we prepare ourselves in that realm. But, you know, last week when they weren't feeling well, and I guess one of them the week before that kind of spread but you know what i noticed is there's multiple things that can occur in that situation Mm -hmm. one i can be like okay well i know the word of i know the word and that's what i'm going to focus on and i'm going to pray over my kids which i did i Mm -hmm. mean i didn't get a lot of sleep last night but um instead of staying up and worrying i'm because i was up and then would try to go to sleep and then back up i sat there and just prayed prayed over my kids laid hands Mm -hmm. you were sleeping a lot but that's okay i was it was wonderful. But that's okay. Um, it's because it's cold. <laughs> um, but I was prepared. I, th- it was just, because since they're not normally sick, I mean, you know, I could see those moments coming in. Yeah. If you're not careful, that worry, oh my gosh, what is this? Um, what's going to happen? Do I need to take them to the hospital? And you can get flooded with so much doubt and fear and um, worry and concern. Well, that's our default setting. It is our right? default setting. Our our intrinsic nature is to go to doubt, is to go to fear, is to go to unbelief. You know, can I get my kids into the doctor? Do I need to go right now? What are they going to find, right? Um, that's not where I went, but I can recognize how easy it is to go and get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of what we do, we do, we prepare ourselves. We know the scriptures, we know the word, and we know that when something comes up, we're going to handle it with the word. So did I enjoy the fact that my kids weren't feeling well? No, hated every single minute of it because I don't like when my babies Mm -hmm. um, don't feel well. But instead of allowing that doubt, fear, and unbelief or or, um, concern come in, I knew, you know what, I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray over my kids. And you know, we've spoken the word into them and the word's going to come out and we know that the word does not return void. So in that situation, even though they were sick and they were not feeling well, and I did not enjoy any single minute of it. No. I also knew within my heart what the word said. Mm -hmm. So I did not have to allow worry, fear, and concern to consume me over it. Instead, I could trust the Lord, rest in peace, I mean, pray for it to be over because I was kind of exhausted and tired because staying, I mean, I was up most nights a lot. Um, So it was not an enjoyable time, but we were prepared because it wasn't, oh my gosh, my kids are sick. Let me go to the Bible. What does the Bible say about this? (laughs) Or worse, let me go to the Bible and try and find a healing scripture. Yes. Right? Um, And I I, I think that's one of the biggest points, right? mm -hmm. Is... And we've talked about this in the past when we've talked about faith and we've talked about some other stuff, mm-hmm. right? It is so easy to to sit back and go, well, I go to church a lot. Right. So I know this stuff. Mm. Until you're pressed and then it's, well, maybe I don't know this as well as I thought I did. Right. And again, I, I'm as much pre- preaching to you guys as, as I am to us. Yes. Right? It, is, it is one thing to believe for your kids to get healed from a cough. Mm-hmm right? A little cold or something. It's a whole other thing if, if they have a serious diagnosis. something significantly more serious. Mm-hmm. And, and we, heck, we've been through that. Mm-hmm. We know people that have been through that. Mm-hmm. We know people who have come out on both aspects of that, unfortunately. Yeah. And fortunately, right? Yeah. There's something to be said for 
knowing those scriptures ahead of time, having meditated on those scriptures. We pray every night Mm. for our kids to be whole, healed, and well. Mm -hmm. We pray healing scriptures over them every night Mm -hmm. for, in Cohen's case, eight plus years. Every night. Not like, oh, we're going to take the night off because they're not sick right now. Every night. Yeah, every night. And I I think that's something that we kind of need to be reminded of, of you've got to put in the work yeah. to see this come to, to come to fruition, to see this be second nature to you, right? Yes. There are, and I'll give just a, a completely ridiculous example. I was working at church this week and Cohen came in to help me, our, our eight-year-old. Mm-hmm. I was terminating a bunch of uh, network cables. Right. I have terminated thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of network cables. Mm-hmm. I don't think about it. It is just, it is, it is routine. I can just sit there and just and right. make a cable. Explaining to Cohen how to do it and then watching him take five minutes to separate eight <laughs> little, you know, four pairs of wires together in the time in which I have made five. And him looking at me and go, Daddy, how do you do that so fast? I'm like, well, I've done this for years. Right. I've got years of terminating cables. Right. Rooms so, full of cables. Yes. That we do. It's one of those things. It's routine. It's simple. It's second nature. Yeah, it is. When you start looking at <coughs> trying to prepare yourself and your family, mm-hmm. right? You can't just sit back and go, you know, I'll study those scriptures another day. I'll look them up when I need them. Mm -hmm. Right? We got talking, and again, it's kind of partially where this came from. We got talking the other day about um, the altars. Yes. Right? Because uh, a couple weeks ago was Invasion, the the youth conference over in Midland um, at Dr. Barkley's church with, with Josh Barkley which we didn't get to go to this year just due to scheduling, but we streamed every single one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's on a, just a fun side note, um, neither of us are teens. Nope. Like, we are far from that. Mm-hmm. Our kids are not yet teens. Nope. And yet we, we still streamed it. We still watched it. And we got um, something out of every single service, and so did my kids. But it was so great to watch a, a, a bunch of teenagers hundreds be hungry and be flooding the altars when yes. they were open yeah as soon as they started praising they worship, they couldn't wait they were running up and and you know having having a blast mm-hmm. but also worshiping and 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 doing all those things mm-hmm. and it prompted a conversation and again i've been going to youth conferences like that for gosh 20 something years mm-hmm. um heck 25, 20, 20 oh. lot. Um, it is a very common conversation to go to those conferences, see the excitement for the altar, and then come back to your local church and not necessarily see that excitement. Mm-hmm. Right? So we got talking about it, you and I, about how it is one thing to get up to the altar when you need something. Yeah. Right. And again, we talked about this last week. Last week's episode mm-hmm. is talking about, you know, are you just there to get what you need? Yeah. Opposed to anything else. Right. Right? <clears throat> so are you only going to the altars and worshiping and praying and you submitting need yourself? Something. Right? Yeah. Because you need that healing. Because you have a need at that right. Right? Or are you there because you're laying the groundwork for that. Mm-hmm. So that if and when you do need to call on that, mm-hmm. you can do the, look, I got all this history. Right. I got these years. You can pull from everything. Yeah. It's built up inside of you. Um, you know, I was a swimmer for many, many years mm-hmm. and I just, for whatever reason, thought about this, right? Like I practiced nine times a week if I wasn't competing. Yeah. My main event was a 50 yard freestyle in which 40 I- 40 seconds? No, 24. 24 under seconds. Under 25 seconds. <laughs> it, 
with my main race. So I do the 50 free and the 100 free for whoever cares or knows what that is. But my 50 free, I mean, I did others, but my 50 free was under 25 seconds and my 100 free was under a minute, mm -hmm. um, under 56 seconds. But nine practices a week yep each practice was two hours that does not include dry land exercises and weightlifting mm -hmm. and all that practice all that time so that i could swim For and improve seconds. my 50 yard freestyle which was sub 25 seconds by a hundredth of a second uh, right like, like that's take, how you're counting yes, improvements yes but why why is something so neutral as swimming which i really enjoyed um and which i then went on and coached and did a whole bunch of stuff. so it was a mm -hmm. big portion of my life but yep. nine out nine practices a week at times if i was competing it yep. was there were still oh my gosh there were still eight practices a week I'd seven to eight practices a week i would ski five days a week practicing for a minute and a half run. So this is when I was in high school and still had schoolwork. Yeah. So still had schoolwork and homework. This was in addition to my work and for swimming for a an event that was, let's take all my events together, less than 10 minutes of time. <laughs> I mean, and that is a lot of time because I was more of a sprinter, but nine, nine practices a week. You know, it, that's, but yet, yeah. we don't think that there's a need no, to no. prepare ourselves for life's battles. No. Life's no, it, moments. It's we're very lazy. We're very lazy. We're very lazy. But it is it's it is one of those things of you know, it is so simple to take the time to prepare. It is so simple to get up to the altar during mm -hmm. praise and worship, right? Oh my gosh, worship, just go like, get up there. But if, if your altars are open at your church, go. But tell me there's not something that you could be up there for. Right. Right? For every person that's ever told me that they're believing for a healing, believing for... Finances, believing you know, for a family member. Yeah, believing for a kid to come back to church, believing for whatever and yet fill in the blank we can and again we see this because one i've been you know a pastor's kid for your entire stinking life um and if you think that we don't notice things we do um but i've been heavily involved in our local church plus i've traveled mm -hmm. through Maybe not a hundred churches, but pretty darn close. Yeah. Um, over the years, mm -hmm. with with pastor and with some of the other ministries that I've traveled with. Every time I hear someone bemoan something that they are, quote unquote, believing for, and then you ask them how often they show up to church, how yeah. often do they read their Bible, how often do they get into their Bible, how often do they pray? Yeah. And the religious people will tell you all the time. And then you can tell kind of by their actions where that level sits. Mm -hmm. But most people, most church members, most Christians are like, well, you know, it's, it's hard for me to come to midweek service because I work as if no one else works. Yeah. It's hard for me to come on Saturday night for prayer because, well, I'm just, <sighs> exhausted. I'm just tired. I, just I was busy. working around the yard all day. And I need to, no one else has I need a yard. to get up for church on Sunday morning. And but you look at the, you know. This is not a pick on people. It's thing. totally a pick on people thing. <laughs> Go, I'm telling you. Th this is a, next, there's so the, much more the for you. The next service you have. Go look at your altars. Go look at the, <laughs> go look at the people that whine to you in the halls before and after service about whatever thing they need. Where are they? And look at where they are. Some of them are up there. Most of them are not. Most of the people, and heck, just look at yourself. Most people, and, and uh, I will happily tell on myself, I am very rarely at the altar. 
typically because oh, I'm playing on drums. it. Uh, you're playing yeah, drums. Yeah, used, to, if we're in our church, I'm playing drums. Mm -hmm. um, but when we go to conferences, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you right now, I don't like going up. I don't like that. It's not enjoyable for me. Well, but I also know that's where I need to be. Right. Right? Yeah. And sometimes it'll take me a song to get up there. Mm -hmm. But I always get up there. Mm -hmm. And I just want to wrap this up and encourage you, since I've been so encouraging this entire time. <laughs> oh. Take a look at what you're asking God for. And reflect back on what you're doing to prepare yourself to receive that and to know how to deal with that. Because yeah. we're all asking God for, you know, specific things. We all have stuff we're working on, right? But. And even if you're not. You should be. Even if you're, well, yeah, you should be. That is a great point. But even if there's nothing pressing right mm -hmm. now and your life is white picket fences and roses. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Still get up there and prepare so that whatever may come, because this is still life and we live on this earth. Heck. Prepare yourself for whatever may come. Do it to set an example. Yes. Go be a support you system for somebody Grab else. somebody else and bring them up there that's struggling. Yeah. Right. Um, it's know, easy peasy. And I, you know, and I had, we had this conversation again, talking mm -hmm. about all that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I am now found out that whenever I can be, I mean, and again, I'm up on praise and worship now too, but whenever I can be, I'm up at that altar and you know what? It took a lot in me to get to a point where I can fight past myself mm -hmm. to get myself up there. Um, I like the back row and that's where I sit most of the time due to kids and other Lord. things, but <laughs> I like, I am a back row. Keep me out of the limelight. Yes. Don't want to be there. Um, and you want to know what to break m through myself. I had to fight hard because I had to forget about everybody else and realize that it has nothing to do with anybody else. I had to get over the fact that, you know, Oh my gosh, what are these people's eyes doing on me? Um, who's looking at me? Who I don't stinky care anymore. And I had to grow past that yep. and I had to fight past it. And anybody who thinks that it wasn't a fight for me, well, then they just really. And that's on you. Yeah. It does, doesn't matter. But for anybody who they find that that is tricky because they're like, oh man, but what are, what are people looking at me? What if I'm not supposed to be up there? Am I in somebody's spot? Yep. Get over it. Yep. Get up to the altar. Prepare yourself because bring bring everything you are to the altar. You want to know what? If God has, if you can get more of God, if you can present yourself, if you can run after him in any way, shape, or form, why wouldn't you? Again, likewise, you know, and I was talking to the youth just this past week, and, you know, one of the things that came up, I was like, so, you know, reading the Bible, do you enjoy it? You know, don't answer me. We can just go through it. Think about this. Answer yourself in your own head. Mm -hmm. Do you find stuff within yourself that, you know, s speaks to you? And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, start reading. If if it's boring to you, again, I'm talking to the youth. I'm like, well, go to somewhere else. It's not like a book that you have to go from page one to page 14,000, you know, whatever. But stop, open up the next book. Yeah. Just keep Keep digging until all of a sudden that word becomes alive to you. Yeah. And if you keep digging, dig deep. Ooh. 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 But if you keep digging, you're going to find what you need and you're going to be able to start preparing yourself. So get up to the altar, open that Bible, talk to God. You know what? And not only when you need something, but just thank him for who he is and all he's done for you. Well, and when you find something, write it down. Yes. Right? Like I, we, yes. we both have notes and we also have shared notes. Yes. Of some of our scriptures that we're standing on, some of the things we're believing for, all of that stuff. Stuff that sticks out to us. Because as great as we are, and, and, and I'll, got them. <laughs> um, mosquitoes are bad this year. What? Oh, there's another one? <sighs> okay. Um, my grandmother, Nana, mm -hmm. Nana was awesome, but she had one of those big old Bibles that she carried around everywhere. Mm. And in that Bible, in the back, in her 
beautiful cursive writing. Oh, yeah. Which no one could read if you couldn't read cursive. Mm -hmm. um, she had pages upon pages of prayers for healing, prayers for salvation, prayers for increase, prayers for peace, mm -hmm. verses upon verses. So that the second that somebody needed something, yes. she could grab her Bible, she could flip it open and find it. Because it's one thing to have it deep inside, right? Mm -hmm. But again, back to like my network mm -hmm. example. I have done hundreds of thousands of connections. Right. And I still keep a little cheat sheet. Right. Because sometimes I blank. And you just need. And I just need the quick like. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And every time I do that, and I've got little notes with it, right? Because mm -hmm. there's specific color codes for different things, mm -hmm. and there's ways you do it for different situations, mm -hmm. right? And I've got a, a little cheat. Mm -hmm. And I show it to every tech I train. Right. Showed it to Cohen. Mm -hmm. Right? So that when you need it, even if you don't think about it up here, even though you've drilled it into your head, you can find it. Right? Prepare yourself. And part of being prepared is realizing that your phone may not always work. Your Bible app may not always work. You may not always have your Bible right on We just hand. spent three, day, three oh, days, geez. a couple weeks ago, camping. Mm -hmm. And supposedly there was service. We got no service. No service. We right? were cut off. Which... Was, was great. But yes. But... It is one of those things of, if you're going to prepare yourself, if you're going to be ready for what may come, mm -hmm. right? You it gotta have this, work. it takes work, and you have to write it down. You gotta put it somewhere. Yeah. Because you're gonna forget. I will just- And I'm leaving you with that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave one last I figured, thing. I knew you would. Have to get the last word in. Yeah, no, I know. Not really. Um, when it, going so back for to- for a short episode. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> Going back to my swimming, when I mentioned that I practiced nine times a week, mm -hmm. when I did get that better time, yep. it didn't mean all of a sudden I eased up on my practice. I practice actually more. went at it harder. Yeah. So just because we have a victory or just because we overcome something or just mm -hmm. because we get over that bump whew, doesn't mean, all right, I got this. You still got to put the We're work We're good. In. Uh, yeah. Put the work in, keep fighting, and keep getting stronger it's, and stronger and stronger. It's like the guys that work out, mm -hmm. right? Like me. Um, they can get all jacked mm -hmm. and shredded. The second they stop, mm -hmm. yes, it's gone. Maybe not completely. So don't lose it. Don't lose keep it. Keep building, keep strengthening. Like... This is a race. We're in. We're we're in a race right now. Yep. Um, Sorry, I got a bit. Yeah. I mentioned. Mosquito. Yep. But we are. We're in a race, right? And um, do not grow weary in well doing. Just gonna go back to that one, and um, press onward to the prize of the upward calling of Jesus Christ. And with that, my time is up. <laughs> It was behind the timer. You couldn't see the countdown. Um, we're going to wrap it there. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to uh, subscribe or share it, uh, you can do that at The Matt and Fiona Show on most uh, social platforms. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching. Please share this with your friends. Um, we are trying to boost our engagement. Um, and encourage others. This whole show is encouragement. Yes. Go team. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. Okay. Um, thanks again for watching. We appreciate it. Hopefully uh, you got some of those. If you'd like to connect with us, again, you can find us on most social platforms at the Matt and Fiona show, uh, mattfiona.com um, when we finish that site uh, or when you're watching this, you yes. can find us. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're also coming to uh, a bunch of podcast platforms uh, slowly but surely just waiting on approvals for those. So hopefully you'll catch it there soon. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next week. Prepare yourself. Really? With the callback? Yes. Okay. All right. Have a good week. See you. Bye.